am Srimati Karuna, the director of the Gandhi Memorial Center in Washington, D.C. I bring to you this series, Speaking of Gandhi, sharing the messages from the life of the Mahatma. Mahatma Gandhi established the All India Village Industries Association in 1935 at Wardha in Maharashtra, India. Its purpose was to study the conditions of villages and the state of village handicrafts. Gandhiji was extremely devoted to reviving village arts and crafts. He felt village upliftment would be impossible without addressing the problem of economic distress. Gandhiji viewed nonviolence the basis of this upliftment. He even explained that he felt one must be rural-minded before one can be nonviolent, and that to be rural-minded, one would need to have faith in the spinning wheel. Listen to this expression from Mahatma Gandhi regarding the significance of the spinning wheel, the charka, as recited by the artist Shanti Chandrasekhar. The message of the spinning wheel is much wider than its circumference. Its message is one of simplicity, service of mankind, living so as not to hurt others, creating an indissoluble bond between the rich and the poor, capital and labor, the prince and the peasant. The charka is the only device which makes us all feel that we are children of the same land. Use of khadi is a sign that the wearer identifies himself with the poorest in the land. You should spin and spin. That is discipline for you. It will enable you to create your purity. Sit at the spinning wheel calmly for half an hour and watch the transformation of your heart. I can quote to you instances of many men and women, of brilliant administrators, one of whom was a member in the Bombay Executive Council. He is as old as I am. He learned spinning only a few months ago. He said, After I began spinning at the wheel, I have somewhat got rid of my insomnia. I returned from office tired, sometimes at midnight, and then I was dozing, thinking of many problems which I did not want to think of. Now I sit at the spinning wheel and spin away. Immediately comes the all-refreshing sleep, the sleep of innocence. Find out for yourselves what it can do. Find out what it cannot do. I personally believe that hand chinning, hand carding, hand spinning, and hand weaving have a brilliant future, at least in India. Each time you draw a thread, say to yourselves, We are drawing the thread of Swaraj. Before moving to Sevagram Ashram in 1936, Mahatma Gandhi started experiments in various industries at Wardha, where he trained village workers in rural reconstruction efforts. These included the making of nira, extracted nectar from palm trees, jaggery, pottery, dairy, leatherwork, oil pressing, and beekeeping. Gandhiji also shifted the headquarters of the All India Spinners Association to Sevagram. Gandhiji believed that hand spinning and hand weaving khadi cloth was the hub around which the village industries could prosper. Not only did Gandhiji strive for independence from the British Empire, but he also developed his constructive program. He believed that for Swaraj to be built on nonviolence meant that it was necessary to give the villages their proper place. This was to be a major part of what became known as the constructive program. 
Gandhiji wanted to impart constructive education through nonviolence, building up of self-reliant individuals living in self-reliant communities through nonviolent and truthful means. The 18-point constructive program became his framework for the new India he wished to see after Swaraj. In a small booklet he entitled Constructive Program, Its Meaning and Place, which he wrote on the train from Seragram to Bardoli, he appealed to others engaged in the freedom struggle to address these important issues. The constructive program was also known as Purna Swaraj, or Complete Independence by Truthful and Nonviolent Means. Gandhiji felt it was impossible to attain Swaraj nonviolently without self purification. Listen once again as Shanti Chandrasekhar offers some of the messages from Mahatma Gandhi in terms of his ideal for basic and constructive education, a genuine training of the head, the heart, and the hands. It is only the handicraft civilization that will endure and stand the test of time. But it can do so only if we can correlate the intellect with the hand. But unless the development of the mind and body goes hand in hand with a corresponding awakening of the soul, the former alone would prove to be a lopsided affair. By spiritual training, I mean education of the heart, a proper and all-round development of the mind, therefore can take place only when it proceeds paripasu with the education of the physical and spiritual faculties of the child. They constitute an indivisible whole. I would develop in the child his hands, his brain, and his soul. If they grow up in their natural innocence, we won't have to pass fruitless idle resolutions, but we shall go from love to love and from peace to peace until at last all the corners of the world are covered with that peace and love for which, consciously or unconsciously, the world is hungry. One woman who became the driving force behind the renaissance of Indian handicrafts was Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay. She was strongly influenced by Gandhiji. And in fact, in 1930, she was part of the seven-member team, lead team, in the famous Salt Satyagraha, along with another woman, Avanti Kabai Gokal. Several cultural institutions in India today exist because of Kamla Devi's vision, including the National School of Drama, Sangeet Natak Academy, Central Cottage Industries Emporium, and the Crafts Council of India. On December 30, 1938, Mahatma Gandhi inaugurated the Udyog Bhavan, the Museum of Rural Technology, which was called Magan Sangralaya. This Sangralaya has two wings, one for Kadi and the second for village industries. Gandhiji last visited the museum in 1944, after his release from prison, following the Quit India movement. At that time, he observed that the museum should not be a static picture of techniques which can improve the village life, but should be a dynamic window on evolving techniques in rural upliftment and thus be changing constantly. Dr. Devendra Kumar took up the work of Magan Sangralaya in 1978 in order to create a new awareness towards Gandhian values. Mahatma Gandhi urged the adoption of Gandhi as a means to economic freedom. Even modern-day practices find new residence in the production of organic kadi. Today, the work continues at Magan Sangralaya under the 
direction of Dr. Devendra Kumar's daughter, Dr. Vibha Gupta. She happens to be one of our Mahatma Gandhi Memorial Foundation Fellowship of Peace Award recipients. Today, the work of Magan Sangralaya provides training and skills development, nurturing local handicrafts and artisan communities, and spreading the reach of Kadi from farm to fabric. Even Mahatma Gandhi, who utilized the symbol of the spinning wheel to transform a nation and prepare for independence, was not attached to that spinning wheel, for he believed that if in the future, for any reason, people should come to see harm in the spinning wheel, they may come to think that no one should wear cotton clothes because they do harm. They may, for instance, believe, in Gandhiji's words, that perhaps the clothes should be made from fibers extracted from banana leaves. Thus, Mahatma Gandhi continually believed in experimentation with the most suitable and sustainable elements of nature and environment to be used for the good and welfare of all. I look forward to sharing with you more messages each week from the life of Mahatma Gandhi. As he said, my life is my message. Vaishnava Jana.